Hello everyone! As you read the title, yes, we're actually doing this. The quote-unquote ultimate Minecraft phylogenetic tree, uh, part 1. Of course, this is all speculation. Minecraft at its core is a fantasy game, so yeah. I made this tree using Minder app on Linux, it's really good. Anyways, if you don't know how to read this graph, then let me uh, explain. You can see in this image, rabbits, all variants of rabbits in here are equally related, share a common ancestor here. But the killer rabbits shares a common ancestor here, which means they are further away. This is similar to a traditional family tree. You would see you are more closely related to your sibling than your cousin. It is similar to that. If you want a more in-depth explanation, I recommend you check out this video by Clint Explains. We'll start with the animals first. I, however, did not include the corals here, but normally it would be here. We move on to our first group, the vertebrates. I have separated into groups for simplicity's sake. There would be more groups, for example, I did not include the sharks or the rays as they don't exist in Minecraft. Anyways, to continue, we have the lobed fin fish, which actually includes land animals and silicants. But of course, we only have land animal here because those fish don't exist in Minecraft. We'll start with our first fictional group, which is the hexapoda, not, not that hexapoda. It means six legs, and we have two animals that have six limbs in Minecraft that are not insects. That includes the sniffer and the endodragon. Before you ask, yes, endodragon has six limbs because, you know, the wings are limbs. The sniffer is an extinct creature that you could bring back. They have a turtle-like appearance with some sort of fur on top. The endodragon is the only living member of the hexapoda and it is also critically endangered with only one animal remaining the end dragon resides in the end along with other creatures we'll cover more about it in the enderman section probably next episode move on to the tetrapods basically other lands animal in minecraft the and amniotes and the amniotes amniotes lay eggs with leather like covering in them but some member lay hard shelled eggs and some don't lay eggs at all. But the anemniotes lay their eggs in the water. We will focus on the anemniotes first because there are fewer of them and it's just easier. We currently have two amphibians in Minecraft, the axolotl and the frogs. The axolotl in Minecraft lives in a lush cave biome in small clay puddles. They can come on land for a brief period. They can also help you attack other hostile mobs but also passive mobs such as fishes. And then we have the frogs. Frogs are a very diverse group of animals but I decided to choose the Goliath frog for this, as they are approximately the same size. We have a couple of subspecies, warm, cold, and temperate. That's it for the anemniotes. Now it's time for the amniotes. We divide it into sauropsid and synapsid. In simple terms, sauropsids are reptiles and birds, and synapsid are mammals, and stem mammals such as the dimetrodon. This is kind of an oversimplification, but we need to get going. We'll start with sauropsid. With Soria, there should be Lepidosaur, but unfortunately there are no snakes or lizards in Minecraft, so we'll continue. We split into Testudines and Acrosauria. We'll start with Testudines, which really only have one member in Minecraft, the turtle. Specifically, the sea turtle. I decided to use green sea turtle as the species name because, you know, why not? It's green. Now let's check out the Acrosauria. This group in real life includes the crocodilians and birds which also includes extinct creatures like non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodilomorphs. We will cover pterosaur first. Now, this is something I'm not confident in, but I just like the idea. Again, don't take this seriously. I decided to use a group of pterosaur, and probably gonna butcher this, Petra Shokna Tine. Uh, probably butchered it with my terrible accent, but which are small pterosaurs such as Cynomacrops, cute little pterosaurs with long tail and relatively big head. I mean, check it out, it, at least in my opinion, looks very similar to the phantom, except the phantom lack hands unlike the Cynomacrops, but some pterosaurs like Nyctosaurus does lack fingers, and also phantom lacks legs, which pterosaurs do not. Although pterosaurs do have short legs, I guess they could be a nocturnal animal. Still doesn't explain the burning though. Maybe they're so adapted to the nocturnal lifestyle that they just can't stand suddenly? I have no idea. We'll move over to the dinosauria and the pteropod, where we have the birds. Pencalo and Sere. Uh, I probably butchered that. Which 
we have the chicken. But parrots can't breed, so this is a great time to split them. Every Minecraft parrots are all based on macaw, except for the grey one, which is based on cockatiel. That's it for the sauropsid. Let's move over to the synapsids. Now, the most disappointing thing is that as of 2022, there are no monotremes. Basically, the group that platypus belongs to. And marsupial, the group that includes kangaroo. So we only have placental mammals here. Let's start with Uacontogilres. Sorry, this group includes rabbits, rodents, and primates. Unfortunately, there are no rodents in Minecraft. No, this can't be. I failed. Lagomorpha, the rabbits. I put in killer rabbits and rabbits. They are four subspecies of rabbits. Desert, snow, plain, and domestic, which is, you know, toast. Again, I just felt like I wanted to include this. I base this on the European rabbit, as that most likely is the rabbit Minecraft is based on. Moving over to the primates, we have two real families, the old world monkeys, this will make sense in a second, and the great apes. Let's start with the old world monkey. You might be asking, hold on a minute, there's no monkey in Minecraft. Well, if you look up proboscis monkey, they really look like villagers and illagers. So I decided to go with that. There are two species, the illagers and the villagers. There are no subspecies for the villagers even though there are variants of it because they are just variants. They are more like ethnicity. In case you don't know, all living humans are under the same subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens. So I'm not having them as a subspecies here. I also included the witch here. Oh yeah, I did not include zombie villager here. You'll see why soon. The next thing we have is the great apes. I was originally gonna include the enderman here, but I decide not to. So we only have player here. The only mob that can create complex civilization and build many structures. Or is it? Another fictional family is the Volinidia. There is one species here, Volans anima, which is the Alley, with some species of them being the Vex. Now I'm deciding if they are domesticated species or genetically engineered creatures. You can decide that for yourself. Now we look into Laurasia Tyria, which we divide into Chiroptera and Franculata. We'll cover the Chiroptera first. Those are the bats. I google what bat Minecraft bat is based on and use that. Bats are an incredibly diverse group, and they are also super cool, even in Minecraft. Then we move to the Foranculata, which includes the Carnivora and the Ungulates. We'll go over the Carnivora first, so here we go. We'll go over to the Feliformia. They are the only two animals here. The Ocelot and the Domestic Cat. I mean, the cat. Maybe in the future we'll get a tiger or lion or something. Then the Caniformia. These groups include the Canidae and the Ursidae. Let's start with the Canidae. The Canidae includes the Volpini and the Canina. There is only one member of the Canina, so let's go over that quickly. Canis Lupus, that's very easy, right? Now the Volpini, I've split it up into the Red Fox and the Arctic Fox. Volpes Volpes and, and Volpes Lacopus. Those are real species, by the way. Then the Ursidae, which we have split into the Ursinae, which would just have the polar bear. And the Iluropodidae, which would have the panda. Now there is only one bear missing to make the wee bear bears. Then the ungulates. We have two here for the artiodactyla, or even toed ungulates, and the perissodactyla, or the odd toed ungulate. The odd toed ungulate included equus, you know, donkey, horses, and zebras. I hope we could see zebras soon. Oh yeah, and horses and donkeys could be bred to make meals. Now the even toed ungulates. We split this into tylopoda and an artiofabula. For the Tylopoda, we have two mobs. Well, more like we will have two mobs here. The camel and the llama. This camel in particular is, is a dromedary camel because of its one hump. I've heard a few, I mean just a handful of people say it's not a camel, it's a dromedary. But that's like saying it's a pug, not a dog. It's weird. People can do simple Google search, I guess. Just like how I cannot pronounce Latin name, huh? That's... Never mind. Moving on, we have the Suina and the Centrum Minantia. The Suina includes one real family, the Suidae, and two fake families. We'll start with the Displodidae, with one of the fake family. I included the Creepers in this, because Creepers are bugged out pig, so it would make sense. The name, by the way, meant exploding leaves, as apparently Creeper has a leaf-like texture. Porcicidia, or Piglins. They are a humanoid pig species who seem to just be hunter-gatherers, but sometimes they do settle down in passion remnants. And they seem to HATE Wither Skeletons. You'll know more about Zombie Pigman- 
I mean zombified piglin in the next episode. I guess old tabby die hard. We reach Suide. We have the hoglins and the pigs. I decided to use the babarusa for this. They are very cool animals and they also look similar. Moving out of Suina to Central Minantia, splitting into Ruminantia and Whipomorpha. We'll check out the Whipomorpha which includes hippo and whales. Yes, whales! Cetaceans are part of this group. The only cetacean in Minecraft is the dolphin. <laughs> I named this after the common bottlenose dolphin. We then move to Ruminantia, then to the Bovide, dividing into two groups, the Caprine and the Bovine. We'll go over the bovine, simple stuff like cows and mushrooms. Now mushroom, they have a symbiotic relationship. I could as well spin it as a parasitic relationship but I am not that brave. With two subspecies, the mushroom might have fed on the cow dead skin. Maybe forget that problem. Let's forget that thing and move over to carpine, which includes sheep and goats. Now I did not use the domestic goat, I used the mountain goat instead as I thought that would make more sense. That's all for the mammals. In case you made it this far, please go to Mojang and ask them for some monitorings or maybe subscribe to me. That's not related in the slightest. I don't know why I said that. Anyways, we're gonna quickly cover the raven fish. The raven fishes. Over at Salmoni Day, I used the sock eye salmon for this because its breeding color is very similar to Minecraft Salmon. I'm not sure if that's unique to the Sockeye Salmon, but I think it is. Please correct me if I'm wrong though. Then Gediforms, aka the Cod. I mean, this fish is cute. Like, genuinely, if you think they're not cute. Well, I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm, I'm really asking. I don't know. I... You don't know. You know why you don't know? Because you don't think. That's why. You don't think, you never figured out how to think, did you Pinkman? Again, they look very similar. This is probably what they base on. Quickly move down here to Tetra Odontiforms and the Tetra Dintidae. We have the Northern Pufferfish. This might be the one. I'm not sure which one it is. In my opinion, this is the closest one I found. But unlike their Minecraft counterpart, they're not deadly poisonous. In fact, a lot of people do eat it. To be fair, people do eat it in Minecraft too somewhat. And if you look above, you can see the lagoon triggerfish. And much other fish are a part of our tropical fishes in Minecraft. Phew! That's it! We're done with the vertebrates! I didn't put in guardians as I think they are more robots than animals. Stay tuned next episode for the rest. Zombie, warden, spiders, and more. Now for Tyler of the day, what we just covered is evolutionary relationship, you know, in the phylogenetic tree. So we're gonna translate evolutionary relationship. That means so you know, it's like a relations, uh, evolutionary relationship is pretty uh, straightforward. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again later.